Okay, so next up we have Mike Bohr from the uh, from Carlotts, the consignment shop for cars. So please welcome. Thanks, guys. Uh, before we get started, just a quick exercise. Um, either if you have pen and paper or just in your head, just think about the car that you currently drive. What you think a dealer would give you for that car if you were to trade it in? So come up with a number. And then come up with the number that you think that dealer would sell that car for if they turned around and sold it on their lot. And then subtract one from the other. And just scream out what the difference is, what you think of the thousands. Five thousand. Four thousand. Four thousand. What would you say? Three? Four? Yeah, the true number is about three to $5,000. And so that's where we um, thought there was an opportunity. You know, should, should the difference between what you get for your car and what it sells for be that great? With the average car being sold in America being about eight to $10,000, that seems like a huge percentage that a, a dealer is making off of simply flipping your car, maybe reconditioning a little bit. Average reconditioning budget on a car is about 800 bucks. So there's a, there's a lot of money there. And so we, we thought, um, we looked at the market, and we saw that a, a lot of people, more and more people are selling their car on their own using Craigslist. And, and that's, uh, as probably some of you know, a hassle, potentially dangerous, a, t a huge time commitment. And so people, before we existed, had, had to make this trade-off between value or convenience. If they wanted value, they would do it themselves. If they wanted convenience, um, they would just trade their car in. And so we, we thought, why, why not create a service, a consignment store for cars, where people who wanted the value um, of the private market but didn't have the time or the wherewithal or the desire to go through the private market could go, come and take their car to get sold um, in a way that gave them thousands of dollars more than their trading value. So that was the idea. And we wrote a business plan, a really long business plan, 80 pages, and tried to think through every possible permutation of this plan. And, and nobody read it, which everybody told us would happen, uh, which is fine. We needed to write the presentation for us. Um, and then we launched it back in 2011, in, uh, right outside of Richmond. And we opened the store, and the way it would work is people would come to us, we'd show them all kinds of data points, what a dealer might give you for it, what it's going for. We had all these dealer tools that we bought. And, uh, and we advised on a price, and people would either accept our price or they'd tell us the price that they wanted, wanted to sell their car for. And very quickly, these transactions started to happen. And people were saying, hey, you know, I got $4,000 more than my, my CarMax number, my trade-in number. Um, this is great. And they started telling all their friends. And so within a few months, we had a lot that was selling a lot of cars uh, in, in Midlothian, Virginia. We opened a second lot in Richmond. Um, and that filled up within a month. And so we thought we were onto something. And so we opened down here in Chesapeake. Um, and so within about a year and a half, we had three stores and selling a lot of cars, but really starting to get, really starting to see all the friction in the, in the car market. And, and our goal was really to create the, the world's best automotive retail experience. That was always the goal. And we thought combining value and convenience was a way to do that. And so um, we started doing what we did. We, we started encountering customer situations. We started learning from our customers on what was important communication, value, transparency, integrity, customer service, all these things were, were really important. And so we, we kind of continued to mold this business that we were starting and, and we created what is now CarLots. We now have um, four, uh, four car stores, one motorcycle store. We're opening our fifth car store in Charlotte and hopefully our sixth in Atlanta later this year. Um, with plans to, to, to go nationally. And um, what the, the, the path that we've taken. You're good on time. I'm just trying to put up your website. Sure. <laughs> um, the path that we've taken has kind of been like this, where this kind of upward sloping um, line is just hustle and trying to grow. And then this is like learning something really big um, that kind of put us on a different trajectory. And that's what we're always, we're, we hustle every day to do this, but then we listen to our customers and um, just try to get creative to do this. Because this is frankly more exciting um, and it kind of puts us into a, a, a different track. Um, some of the things we learned, um, one is that um, businesses can use us. That was a huge 
growth point for us. So we had some people sell their cars and said, you know, I have a contracting business. I have two or three trucks. Do you think I could bring those by? They have 180,000 miles or 220,000 miles. I typically take them to, you know, I donate them or I take them to a wholesaler and get a couple hundred bucks. And we said, you know, let's try it. Let's see what happens. And what we found was that that two, three, four, five thousand dollar difference between wholesale and retail is kind of the number regardless of the car. So we, for instance, we had a, a very old um, uh, Ford Taurus brought in last week with a CarMax offer $500. And we sold it eight days later for $3,500. This happened a couple days ago. A, a car gets reconditioned and, and we have all our mechanics look at it. We get it professionally cleaned and put into good shape and then we can put warranties on any car. But that's just the delta that dealers make and we feel like they should. We feel like you, you know, we should all we should all make that together. Um, and so we started working more and more with businesses, um, and now that's uh, a huge, huge part of our of our business. We now work with national leasing companies, fleet managers who sell hundreds of thousands of vehicles a year, who had traditionally taken their vehicles to auction, um, and now we sell them for them. So whether you know whether you know someone who has a, a small HVAC business all the way to a big leasing company that has hundreds of thousands of vehicles, you know we now work for them, and that's one of those. Uh, also, motorcycles was a was a big kind of step up. Um, communicating a lot better with our sellers was a big step up. We we're we we're upsetting a lot of sellers by calling them every two weeks and now to to give them an update on how their car is selling. Uh, and now up front we say, how often do you want us to call? Call you? And it, you know something that simple has brought our customer service index scores way way up. So we're we're still in development. We're still continuing to learn from our customers. We're still continuing to grow uh, and and mold our product. But um, but we're, we're very excited about the direction it's going. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Owned. Um, we we are going through the process of dealing with a franchise consultant and pulling the documents together now. We don't know whether that's the path we're going to go. I'd rather own all my stores. Um, what's pulling at us, though, is we have these national accounts who want us to be in parts of the country where we just don't have the resources to be. So we have national accounts who say, oh, you're doing great in Virginia. When are you going to be in Houston and L.A.? And we, you know, no time soon. So we're, we're thinking about um, using franchising to set up kind of pockets of density in cities where we see a lot of um, national account vehicle volume. Because the way we, the way we've we've always started is we set up a lot and it's empty, and we beg our friends and family to come in, and you know we'll start a hundred car lot with fifteen cars, and then we have to kind of make people happy and have them tell all their friends and you know try to advertise inexpensively um, in a very crowded marketing market and with these national accounts we can start a lot full and so you know we can call up our customer in New Hampshire and say hey we're opening in Charlotte next month we need 80 cars to be dropped there for our opening and these are all consigned cars and they're all you know great vehicles we get them all checked out and so the, it, it makes the business model much greater, it, much less expensive to start. And so as we open in different parts of the country, we view these national accounts as a key way to kind of get the business up and running. But right now, they're all owned. Who's your biggest competition? Um, it's funny, you know, when we first started, we thought our biggest opportunity was to convert Craigslist people. We thought this was going to be a much easier way to do Craigslist type stuff. And what we found is, the folks who are comfortable doing it on Craigslist are comfortable doing it on Craigslist. And they actually kind of like that. Even though we can get them more money than they could on their own because we offer financing and warranties and you know test drives and trade-ins and all that stuff. Um, what we found is the, the bulk of our customer base is folks who had traditionally traded into a dealer because they didn't have um, the time or desire to go through Craigslist and there was just no other option. So it was dealer trade or nothing. So they dealer traded. And now we offer them thousands more. So so now our main com competition on the seller side is people who are trading in their car to dealer. Um, on the buyer side, um, you know everybody who sells cars. So the 40, 40 million 
of dealers that are out there in the U.S. Mike? Um, God, I love your business model. I have a thousand questions. I'm sitting here and my mind's going uh, in a thousand different directions. Um, who uses you more, male or female? What's the net payment to the customer of that three to five thousand um, dollars? And how do you uh, account for uh, integrity of the owner of the car? As far as you know, a lot of people have problems with the car and they put it up for sale and they don't tell anybody. They can do the same thing to you. Yep. Um, so those are three to start with. Great, great questions. We found that if you own a car and you value money, regardless of your gender, your age, whatever, you're our customer. So we, when we first started, we had some coverage in the newspaper, and we found that a very older, an older demographic was coming to visit us. So we thought, oh, this is a great business for older folks. But just that's where we were. We were in the newspaper, and old, older folks read the newspaper. Then, we, then someone said, you're a great business for military, so we started advertising in the military, and so we got a bunch of military folks who said, oh, this is a great business for military. And so it's real, what we've learned over now four years is if you like money, uh, if you like holding on to your money and you drive a car, then you're our customer. And it really doesn't, you know. Uh, Are you seeing a trend in demographic? No, no, we have not. We have, we've studied it. We've looked. It's, it's, all, it's all across the board. Um, our sellers tend to be... Um, a higher income demographic, so a lot of times, uh, you know, most people leave their car with us. About eighty percent of people leave their car with us while it's for sale. Twenty percent of them continue to drive it. The folks who naturally find us are folks who can leave a car with us and not get their money for twenty days. Our average days of sale is about twenty-two days. So that tends to attract someone with a with more money. But we have solutions for everybody. We just haven't marketed it effectively yet. We should be for everybody. Um, your second question was the about net, uh, the net. To the net. Um, it, it, you know, it is what it is. So, it, it, you know, sometimes the, the delta over wholesale is $7,000. Oh, probably your question is what are our fees? $199 when you drop it off and $699 when it sells. So $898 total. Um, and that's it for every car, whether you bring your Lamborghini or your 15-year-old Ford Focus, that's, that's the fee. And what that does is it makes every car uh, just as valuable to us to sell as every other car. It motivates customer service that's not geared towards really fancy cars or geared towards really you know, low-end cars. It's you bring it in and we're going to treat you like every other customer. Um, in terms of the mechanical question, every car that comes in gets a state safety inspection, which arguably is not a very thorough inspection. And then we don't have mechanics. So our guidance to every buyer is do your own diligence. And you should do that whether you're buying from you know, a, a, a dealership that's been there for 50 years and gets great reviews, or whether you're buying from Joe's used cars on the side of the road. The buyer should always do their diligence. And then we offer warranties and other ways to protect um, the owner. We have found um, that people with better cars tend to bring their cars to us. Because if you know your car is a piece of junk, you kind of have a value in your head. And if you take it to a dealer or to CarMax, they'll give you a number. And compared to that value in your head, because you know it's a piece of junk, it's, it's probably OK, and so you just take it. But if you know you've garaged it and babied it and oil changed it every 3,000 miles and all that, then you get that number. And that's not a number that's satisfying to you. It, it won't be if you know you have a good car. And that's when you start seeking alternatives, and that's when people find us. So we tend to find our, our warranty claims ratio is the lowest in the industry. But we don't really get returns or anything like that. Have we sold a car that's broken down a day after we sold it? Absolutely. Uh, and we, you know, we try to make it right. But ultimately, we never own the car. So it's not our car. And, and buyers know that when they're buying a car. They're not buying it from us. We're arranging a transaction between seller and buyer. Great. I saw a bunch of hands going up here. Yes, ma'am. What's your um, name? Ashley. 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 Um, I had a question in reference to the selling of the cars. Do you sell parts as well, or is it just purely selling the car? What we are is purely a marketplace for the car. Okay. So we have great partners that we trust that do service and parts and detailing and all that, and we recommend them, and we've used many, and some we've trusted until they gave us a reason not to. And so we, you know, we're constantly evaluating folks that are good actors in the space, um, and that's who we use. But we're purely a marketplace to get these transactions You mentioned that you could sell a car for more going through you all, and you, you 
reference the fact that you can finance and there are warranties and all that is who sees that revenue? I mean, you charge that flat eight ninety eight, and then do you also keep the, the the finance charges and whatever else, or does that get passed along to the seller as well? Uh, no. So we're a dealership, and we take the risk when there's a financing. We take the risk of, of the recourse from the bank. So that's we'll make you know our typical revenue model is one hundred ninety nine plus six ninety nine. The buyer pays us two ninety nine. If there's a financing, we'll make a hundred bucks, okay. so maybe two hundred bucks. Uh, depending on the bank, everybody pays a different amount. And on a warranty, um, the warranty funds go into a pool that covers the warranty. And if we end up selling cars that are better than average, then we'll make money from that pool. If we end up selling cars that are worse than average, we'll go out of business. So, um, yes, we do make money on that um, if we continue to sell really good cars. Um, but that's it. It's a very pure... You know, it's it's eight ninety eight plus two ninety nine plus maybe a hundred, so average fourteen hundred bucks a car typically, um, and and then we just have to do a lot of them. You know, because a traditional dealer will make four or five thousand dollars on a car. Sometimes they'll lose money on a car. Um, we need to do a lot of transactions to make money. Kristen, Kristen. Me. Yes. Okay. Um, so I've used car lots. I do have a question. But I've used car lots twice in the last year um, to sell two cars. Of six to seven year old car and then a one year old car we just thought it was too small. And the experience was exceptional. My husband is so sold that you know he just thinks it's the most amazing thing awesome. ever. So definitely look into it. Um, but seriously even a year old car which we obviously owed money on that one still. It was so seamless they just sent us a check in the mail once the you know for the difference of what was owed and what we were paid. So definitely it's an exceptional service. And customer service seriously your team is so good that the woman that was gonna buy my Subaru that was a year old Perry Buick, she was on the phone with them all day in your location, and they were trying to get her to come get a car that never left the lot, and my car was a year old with 9,000 miles on it. Your team sold her the car because she liked them better and how attentive they were to her. Yeah. So, it really is a good experience. So my Thank question you. is, um, now that you have four locations with the fifth and count motorcycles, are you finding that you're getting the number of um, new users or, or the marketplaces um, coming and finding out about your location quick enough? So are you sort of on track with yeah, I mean, you know, we could always do more, right? So we, people always ask us, you know, how long do you keep a car in your lot until you tell them to leave or kick it out? Or, you know, do you take any car? And our view is, you know, we're kind of a hotel. We've got a certain number of spaces. Until, the num until we're totally full at every lot, we'll, we'll, we'll accept cars. We won't kick people out. Uh, we're this place where people can mark, where we can market other people's cars for us. We'd love to be full to a point where if you're not pricing your car appropriately after 120 days, we kind of tell you to come pick it up and it gives people more motivation to have a, a market price car. Because probably, you know, if we, we have 350 cars on the lot right now, there are probably 50 that just are priced ridiculously and nobody's ever going to buy them and they'll be there for until the person eventually comes and picks it up. Um, so we'd like to be more, you know, we'd obviously like to do more business. Um, we are marketing, you know, we rely, 80% of our business is, frankly, people like you telling all their friends, uh, word of mouth, repeat customers, um, referrals, uh, and we're, we're actually, tomorrow we're filming a, a, like a real television ad, which will be fun. Um, so yeah, we, you know, we, and then the commercial side of the business has been great in adding units to our, to our store. But yeah, there's, there are 40 million used cars that are transacted every year, so, you know, we just need a small piece of that. Russell and then I think Ron. Okay. Uh, tell me about the process. If I was going to bring an automobile and you sit down with the seller and say this is the value we think it would be worth, then if I would do that, then do you do anything like detail the vehicle? And then do you put a reserve on there? Like if a buyer comes in and wants to negotiate, and I've set a reserve on there that you know you can go down to this point to stop there? Yeah. So when you come in, I mean, all our people are called coaches because that's what they're doing. We're, kind of working with you to come up with the right price. So we'll scan your VIN, we'll look over your car, we'll look at the market data, we'll see what the wholesale numbers are, we'll see what um, retail numbers are, we'll see what Kelly Blue Book is, you know, all the, all the books that dealers use. And then we'll say, you know, based on the way your car looks and the market for this car, we, we recommend you selling it for 15. And then you might say, now let's, try, let's start at 16. So, we, you know, it's your car, so you tell us what price to sell at. Um, then we get it professionally cleaned, professionally photographed, inspected by a mechanic, and then listed everywhere where people shop for cars. So it's on autotradercars.com, Craigslist, a bunch of other sites. Um, 
We're then there, we're there 9 to 7 Monday through Saturday, we go on test drives, we offer financing, trade-ins, warranties, anything to make it as easy as possible for that buyer to buy your car. So then someone comes in and they offer 14. Okay, so you've priced it at 16, maybe you've said, sell it at 16, but my reserve is 15, so you may give us a reserve price. We'll never sell it at the reserve price or anything less than the list price unless we've left a message for you and can't reach you on every number and email address that you've left for us. So we, we'll never sell down to the reserve unless we just can't reach you. So that's only a number that we ever look at if every number you've given doesn't work. Um, but yeah, you know, maybe once a month we can't reach the guy and they haven't sent us a, given us a reserve, so we just can't do a deal. Uh, and that's, a, that's always a bummer, but it happens. Right, did I see other hands go up? Yes, Robert. What is your marketing? You do a fabulous job. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> You know, we kind of solicit our own people to like help. We, we don't, we have a marketing agency that does our kind of TV, radio, kind of creative stuff. But in terms of branding and um, that's just all of our people telling us, you know, it'd be cool is if we had a little plastic football to give to kids, you know. You know, it'd be cool is like, I need a, I need a rain jacket. Let's give some rain jackets to people if they buy. I remember when I, first, when I first heard about it, I called you guys just to say that I thought, I'm not even trying to sell you anything. It was to tell you that I thought it was the coolest business model I'd heard of in a very long time. Oh, thank you. And even the way the building looks, even the way the logo looks, even, even these are it's the coolest coach you ever got. <laughs> <laughs> I, a great job. I appreciate it. I mean, back to what Kristen said, it's like what we are is a professional services business. We're just people. And that's what makes the experience really cool. And you know, the first thing Kristen mentioned was the, the people that she that she met and who worked with her. That's the most important thing in our business. And we're, so we're always trying to figure out how to maintain that level of talent as we grow. Because, um, you know, the people hate the used car dealer. It's kind of a cocktail party joke. And if we can differentiate ourselves from that cocktail party joke and create a unique experience where people lead with the people they dealt with. Um, I mean, if you look at our online reviews, almost all of them, the person leaving the review mentions the person they worked with. That's like, that makes me feel really, really good that we've got folks who are leaving an impact on our customers. So luckily you have a place in Chesapeake. Is there one in Virginia Beach as well? There is on Virginia Beach Boulevard. Just opened a month and a half ago. So uh, right near town center. Near town center. Yeah. Okay, so right up, right up here. I might have to go by on the way out. Yeah, yeah check it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other questions? <laughs> How many people does it take to run a store? Um, we, so it depends on the size of the store, but somewhere between four and five a day. Um, and we'll have some days that are really busy and, you know, unfortunately people have to wait. And, you know, there are other days when we probably staff it with two or three. Um, we're not a traditional car dealership. Where are they got, commission or are they sell? They're all salaried. Um, there is a bonus that they get based on the success of their store, but it's all team-based. There's no individual incentives. It's all, everybody's working as a team. So one of the things as we were studying the market, people make pretty good money as a car dealer, but the lifestyle is horrendous. You know, you're working seven days a week, opening bell, the closing bell, and then some guy comes in five, five minutes before you close. You could be there till 11, trying to get a deal done. And there's just no, there's no work-life balance at all. What we decided is we we're gonna to try to attract someone who is comfortable making a little bit less but wants to see their family and have some sort of balance in their life. We, when we started this business, we said, we want to create a company that we would want to work for. Um, and that's been hard, frankly. Uh, but uh, nobody needs to come in on their day off to do a deal so that someone, some other guy doesn't snake their deal. And you know, there's just none of that. It's all team-based. Let's try to make as many happy customers as possible. And at the end of the day, if there's money at the bottom line, then that gets split amongst the folks. And kind of a follow-up. So What's the commission? Is there a commission relationship then with the sellers at all, or is or your, your staff, or is it all just salary based? Flat, flat fee for the seller? No, no, for your people who work for you. Yeah, it's There's all salary. salary plus a bonus based on net profit of that store. So the store, good. So that yeah, enhances the team. Yeah. yeah. Did you have a uh, background in the car industry? No, How no, I was an investment it? banker. Um, uh, I. I ran uh, the transportation and logistics group for the bank that I worked for. So we, I worked in automotive aftermarket, but never, I've, I've never been in retail business. I've never dealt with customers. I've ne you know, this whole thing is very new to me. So but awesome. how did you get into it? Like, what 
what made you jump into this and you know a lot of things that you're saying you've obviously done because you're, you're paying attention to the business to the customers um, for some something new like this how you're educating yourself to be looking out for all these things yeah so this would uh, so in my banking job I traveled four or five days a week which was part of the reason why I felt like I needed to get out and I have three small kids at home and just it wasn't working but I, I kept a notebook of ideas and this was one that I just kept coming back to you know I couldn't I couldn't shake it um, and so I just I had two ideas that I wanted to chase I left my bank without any um, without anything tangible and I just started working on both and you know I, I, I'm, I live in Richmond and Richmond is kind of it's kind of like a used car hub Carmack started there there are lots of the original investors and founders of that business are there and they were all very gracious with their time as we were developing the plan and so I got a lot of great advice and so that idea kind of um, took off and so I started writing the plan and I solicited a board of advisors to help me and one of them was this guy Aaron who's a co-founder with me and he started selling cars in Detroit when he was 13 has two Harvard degrees and was continuing to sell cars and there's like the most unique background in the world um, and so he you know he was a single uh, single guy living in Chicago working for McKinsey in their automotive practice and I said how about you know moving to Richmond taking a hundred percent pay cut and uh, you know and starting his business and uh, he said yes so that was and then our, we had with three founders third partner is a guy who I worked with at the bank many years ago. He went on to business school and was working in Raleigh, and he decided to come and join us. We have, we have okay, one more question, and then our question for you. Um, inventory. Uh, we have, I have heard from numerous uh, car people that uh, over the last 10 years, inventory has become increasingly challenged on the used market. Uh, everything from people holding on to the cars longer to Katrina, Sandy, uh, now Houston, taking out millions of cars off the market. Um, it doesn't seem like it's been a problem for you guys at all. It's um, it's just not true. It's just not true. It's some. If I'm a dealer, I want everybody to think that because that I can justify higher prices. So there's there are like broad mistruths in the used car market that everybody kind of not have. Man, it's really hard to get cars. You know, we're lucky we have this one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Nobody say that in my car. Right? Yeah. It's, it's just not true. There are millions of cars sold at auction every week that dealers can buy. Maybe they have to pay up more for quality or whatever, but you know, ultimately the consumer will, will bear that, that price. There is not a used car shortage anywhere. Um, they're, they're everywhere. You can see a hurricane taking out of, you know, tens of thousands of cars makes a great news story. It's, go, go it's, a, there, right, it's, right. a, it's a pimple. I mean, there's, you know, there, there, there are 40 million used cars sold every year. And if you go back 20 years, there have been 40 million used cars sold every year for 20 years. It's some, in a bad market, maybe it's 39. In a good market, maybe it's 41. It's one of the most stable industries in, that exists. New cars go like this. You know, in a bad market, 9 million. In a good market, 18 million. But used is totally flat. And um, it's just because it's a it's a need-based good, not a want. A new car is kind of a want. Um, so every year that we 40 million, we just want as much of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you're you're um, headquartered and live in Richmond. What can the folks down here do? And I'm going to start making a rule that it can't be get the word out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what could what can we? Can we get that can that start after me? Yeah, <laughs> we're definitely going to do that. Because actually, one of the things about presenting here, in addition to getting in front of this room full of people, is your stuff is all over our social media. So we're absolutely getting the word out about car lots. Yeah, um, you know, it's really just to be just to be thoughtful about the used car process and and encourage people you know and people who you influence to be thoughtful about it. Not to come visit car lots, not not anything, but just be thoughtful about it and and don't fall for the wavy guy. Um, uh, front or the inflatable gorilla. You just really think through and like, educate yourself about what you're buying. Um, the, the used car dealer always knows more than you. I mean, so many people say, oh, I, I got a great deal. You know, I really got one over. These guys do this for a living. They go to week-long training seminars where they're taught to basically lop your head off. And, and you know, we, we go to those, we go to the same seminars. You know, we, we, we are in the market. Like, 
we see it, and it's 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 t totally shameless, um, but it's it's just that's just the way it works. And so, really, really educate yourself before buying a car, and and talk to people who you feel like you can trust, and talk to people who you know have had great experiences, um, and uh, and follow their lead. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Over a minute, minute over, so I just want to do quick plugs for next week. We're back here next week.